Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our event, Data-Driven Voluntary National and Local Reviews for the SDGs. My name is Miriam Rabi, and I'm the head of SDGs today at the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and I have the pleasure of moderating this one-hour webinar. We're very excited to have you join us today, so please feel free to introduce yourselves and let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. Uh, and throughout the webinar, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A function so that your questions aren't lost in the chat. We have the honor to be in the presence uh, of wonderful speakers today, uh, so I won't take up too much time with the introduction. Um, but uh, over the past year, uh, in collaboration with our partner Esri, we've been working on developing an ArcGIS story map template for voluntary national reviews and voluntary local reviews uh, that would encourage country and city focal points to present data in a more accessible format to improve data ac access, engage citizens uh, and the broader SDG community in conducting analyses, uh, looking at trends over time and location, uh, and ultimately showcasing the impact of data on uh, decision making. Uh, so in today's session, we will hear from leading national and local governments uh, and UN agencies that are using innovative geospatial tools and methods to produce data and report their progress uh, on the SDGs. Geospatial data, earth observations, remote sensing, and various innovative tools and applications play a significant role in providing timely insights into the state of the SDGs. Uh, and together today, we'll learn about three leading examples that will inspire other countries, states, and cities to work towards data-driven reporting on the SDGs. Towards the second half of the event, uh, we'll hear from um, a very active youth advocate and our colleagues from Esri and the Public Foundation uh, as well. Um, without further ado, um, I would like to hand it over to, uh, let me change my slide, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, uh, President of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network uh, and Director of the Center for Sustainable Development at the Columbia Climate School for his opening remarks. Professor Sachs, thank you so much for joining us today. The floor is yours. Mariam, it's really a pleasure uh, for me to join and I'm especially a student of yours and the other promoters of new geospatial and data techniques for the SDGs. Uh, I have to admit that when I was going to graduate school these uh, many, many years ago, countries were arranged in alphabetical order. <laughs> we did not have GIS uh, data. We certainly did not have satellite data giving us up-to-date accounts of the state of the planet, whether it's the climate system, uh, the uh, state of fisheries, the uh, even uh, greenhouse uh, emissions that can be tracked in real time, uh, and many of the applications that you have been using and you have been curating from research centers around the world. We're proud of our partnerships and the learning that we have from national governments that are leading this effort, such as the, the Emirates, the UAE. Uh, we're extremely proud of our partnership with Esri, uh, the company that first brought us uh, the technologies of uh, GIS and spatial uh, data analytics. Uh, and uh, I'm very proud uh, of you, Mariam, for your leadership of SDGs today which is a mission of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network to bring the best of our analytical capacities, technologies, and data in real time for the purposes of understanding where we are with the SDGs, but even more importantly, how we can get to success on the SDGs. Remember that when we use geospatial data, whether it's satellite data or geolocated big data from mobile phones, or when it is the point and click data that students around the world are using to uh, geolocate their schools and put them on a school's map that can be used by public administrators, part of the purpose is to understand the state of affairs uh, the progress or lack of progress towards the SDGs, but part is real-time management, uh, real-time governance of the major SDG challenges uh, to monitor deforestation, to monitor 
climate dangers to monitor uh, the uh, access to vital public services such as health clinics or uh, uh, school facilities. And there are so many rapidly evolving applications that it's uh, thrilling uh, what we are seeing, what we're learning. And uh, as I say, I'm profoundly impressed by what you, Mariam, and your team at SDGs Today are accomplishing. So without further ado, let's get into the program, uh, which is wonderful case studies and uh, wonderful partners. And this will be a, a huge uh, uh, opportunity to, to move forward on the use of new kinds of data, especially uh, geospatial data and big data for the purposes of advancing the SDG. So thank you for letting me join, letting me listen in uh, and uh, back over to you. Thank you so much, Professor Sachs, for joining us and for your opening remarks. Um, uh, without further ado, I would like to invite um, His Excellency Abdullah Nasser Luta, Deputy Minister of Cabinet Affairs for Competitiveness and Experience Exchange and Vice Chair of the United Arab Emirates National Committee on the SDGs for his keynote speech. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you for taking the time to join us today. We know you have a very busy schedule and appreciate your contribution to today's discussion. Thank you, Mariam. It's an honor to be with you today. Thank you, Professor Sachs, for arranging for this uh, distinguished um, discussion. Um, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be with you here today to discuss the potential uh, and impact of digital data-driven VNRs for the SDGs. Uh, what makes the SDGs distinct from other development-related goals is that these goals are intended to be universal. Today, no country can achieve socioeconomic prosperity by working within its borders only. All countries need to work together to realize a sustainable future for the whole world. VNRs are a stock take of how far we have come and the immense potential of what lies ahead. Yesterday, the report of the UN Secretary General, Special Edition 2023, was launched, and the numbers are a wake-up call. Despite progress, 2.2 billion people still lack safely managed drinking water services. 3.4 billion lacked safely managed sanitation services, and 1.9 billion lacked basic hygiene services in 2022. As of 2022, nearly 1.1 billion people lived in slums or slum-like conditions in urban areas, with an additional 2 billion expected to live in slums or slum-like conditions over the next 30 years. Globally, nearly one in four young people were not in education, employment, or training in 2022. The HLPF is not only an opportunity to identify the challenges and acknowledge the advances we have made globally, but also to own a responsibility that lies ahead for each one in creating a better future. The importance of data and digitalization in driving decision-making for the SDGs and monitoring progress cannot be overstated. Today, I want to shed light on an important aspect of measuring progress towards the SDGs beyond global rankings. The SDGs index published by SDSN is a great tool that ranks countries based on their advancement towards these goals. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that this ranking primarily relies on international organizations research papers, and multiple sources, often overlooking the most recent and real-time efforts in the, by individual countries. For example, indicators such as human traffic level, source dated 2017, marine biodiversity threats embodied in imports dated 2018, and freshwater biodiversity threats embodied in imports are derived from research papers dated 2018. Given the varying stages of development across countries, 
there exists an opportunity for a platform that does not penalize the least developed countries for their inability to address certain indicators due to circumstances. The essence of the SDGs lies in the solid, reliable facts. COVID-19, for instance, set many countries behind, and it was the race to survival. Indexes need to consider situations that may embed the progress of the countries, especially the least developed ones. On the other hand, the digital story maps developed by SDSN and ESRI is a powerful tool that should be adopted by all countries. Unlike the rankings, the digital story maps provide a comprehensive and inclusive assessment of a country's relentless pursuit of the SDGs. It allows nations to showcase progress, challenges, and strategies directly, ensuring their efforts are accurately represented and acknowledged on the global stage. The digital story maps empower nations to present a holistic view of their endeavors, promoting transparency, accountability, and collaboration among all stakeholders. By shifting our focus to this powerful tool, we can truly celebrate the progress made by nations in their dedication to the SDGs. Since the adoption of the SDGs, the UAE has successfully presented two VNRs, one in 2018 and the second one in 2022. These reviews have served a comprehensive catalyst for the UAE's uh, SDGs ecosystem to drive positive impact nationally, regionally, and globally. Developing capabilities to monitor and track progress in the implementation of the SDGs is our key focus. We have developed sophisticated tools such as the SDG Data Hub and the government's performance monitoring system, which we call ADA, both of which are highlighted in our story map. To bring our story to life, we have crafted a, captiv a captivating digital story map that showcases our remarkable journey. I invite each one of you to explore this immersive experience where you will discover the UAE's efforts towards the acceleration of SDGs nationally and globally. Our vision extends beyond our own accomplishments. We are eager to collaborate, share knowledge, and inspire others on their own paths towards achieving these global goals. Thank you, and now I would like to hand over to my colleague, Muskan Chandwani, who will take you through our digital story map. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you for the insightful remarks and for taking the time to join us uh, today and to uh, set the tone uh, for uh, today's event. Um, I think we're all very eager to hear from uh, Ms. Muskan Chandwani, International Relations Coordinator of the Director General Office, the Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Center, uh, who will be presenting the UAE SDG Data Hub and Story Map. Uh, Ms. Muskan, over to you. Greetings to one and all. It is a pleasure to be here with you virtually. The UAE's commitment towards the SDGs is at the heart of our country's vision for the future, which is aligned with the SDGs. As emphasized earlier by His Excellency, the UAE successfully presented our second BNR at the UN HLPF 2022. We recognize the potential of digital story maps as a compelling tool to enhance the accessibility of the SDGs journey and share our story with other countries. Now I will just share my screen and um, show you our story map. By embracing the GIS technology and the digital template which is developed by the SDGs today, we translated our extensive efforts into the UAE story map which captured various aspects of our progress. Some of the sections included in the digital VNR include uh, the UAE SDGs timeline, which highlights the UAE journey from the incorporation 
up until today, which is the UAE's delegation participation at the 2023 HLPF. Some of the sections are included are the methodology and process of implementation, which highlights the UAE stakeholder ecosystem and the implementation. Another section which is included is the SDG's performance uh, monitoring tool, which is basically, as His Excellency mentioned, it is a centralized reporting and monitoring tool, also known as the SDG ADA system, which serves as an enabler to government entities in the UAE to promote, manage, and follow up on the SDG's implementation. Another section is the SDG's performance overview, which uh, basically highlights various case studies and data points for the UAE across the 17 SDGs some of which uh, case studies are the Government Experience Exchange Program and the Digital Schools, which is an initiative by the Mohammed bin Rashid Global Initiatives, which aims to provide a certified online education to students who do not have easy access to formal education. And you can see various uh, such case studies across the 17 SDGs. Through our story map, you can also access the UAE SDGs Data Hub, which was developed in collaboration with ISRI you will find initiatives, geomap data stories, success case stories, and more that encapsulate the UAE's journey towards the 2030 agenda. We encourage all countries to adopt technology and innovative tools, such as the digital story map, to tell your story and to inspire and be inspired by other countries in our journey towards a better tomorrow. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to connecting with you at the HLPF. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Muskan, uh, for sharing the story map. And it's always inspiring to see how uh, you position new technologies and approaches as, at the center of your work uh, for the SDGs. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, and after the event, we'll be sharing all the links so that the participants can uh, look through and learn from uh, all of these uh, story maps as well. So thanks again. Great, wonderful. Okay, so uh, next um, we do uh, have another presentation and wonderful story map um, from uh, Miss Celeste Connors, a CEO of Hawaii Green Growth, uh, UN Local 2030 Hub, and the co-chair of the Local 2030 Islands uh, Network. Um, I think before I hand over to the mic to uh, Miss Celeste, we're gonna play a video first. Um, and so if I can ask um, my colleagues to pull up the video, um, we'll watch that together and then we'll hear from Ms. Celeste Connors. In the heart of the Pacific Ocean lies a place where sustainability is not just a buzzword, it's a way of life. Hawaii is a community of passionate individuals dedicated to creating a sustainable future for generations to come. Through the Aloha Plus Challenge, Hawaii Green Growth is spearheading a movement that has made Hawaii the first and only state in the nation to submit a local review, demonstrating unwavering commitment to sustainable development goals. It's a testament to the tireless efforts of a community that refuses to accept the status quo. It embodies aloha, nurturing our aina, and fostering harmony between people and planet. Hawaii Green Growth is a public-private partnership. It's a group of stakeholders, over 150 individuals and institutions that have come together locally in Hawaii to help achieve Hawaii's statewide sustainability goals and commitments. The Aloha Plus Challenge is Hawaii's statewide framework for driving local progress against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And launched in 2014, the Aloha Plus Challenge identified six priority areas. As an island state, climate change threatens our economy, culture, environment, and the sustainability of our way of life. Hawaii has an opportunity to lead the world with our response to climate change in the coming years. As a county, we have recognized the urgency of addressing climate change and preserving our natural resources. 
Our commitment to the Aloha Plus Challenge signifies our dedication to creating a better future for Kauai and the generations to come. From renewable energy initiatives to community-driven projects, the County of Hawaii is blazing a trail toward a prosperous and vibrant future. Let us continue to harness this momentum, working together towards a resilient and equitable Hawaii Island that thrives economically, socially, and environmentally. I recognize the profound significance of the Voluntary Local Review, which underscores our island's unwavering commitment to the Aloha Plus Challenge. Let us reaffirm our commitment to this transformative journey, working hand in hand to build a resilient and sustainable Maui, Molokai, and Lanai that future generations can proudly call home. I am thrilled to shine a light on the bright spots within the city and county of Honolulu through the Voluntary Local Review. Honolulu is a beacon of sustainability and resilience. So let's celebrate these accomplishments and continue to foster a vibrant, thriving Honolulu that sets an example for other communities around the world. The reason young people give me hope is that I see that they are inclusive, that they are intersectional, that they have great courage, they have vibrant energy, they are always playful and courageous, and that's what we need. These are times that require great bravery. Our values, culture, and indigenous knowledge have strengthened Hawaii and its people for a thousand years. Our kupuna sustained our islands and natural resources by maintaining a balanced system focused on caring for the aina. When we look at the ahukua'a structures of old, we see thriving ecosystems, vibrant cultures, and reciprocal relationships. Aohe hana nui ke alu ia. Familiarizing the people of the world with this way of thinking is a critical step to creating a brighter tomorrow. The future of Hawaii and Island Earth depends on it. This mindset based on Ike Kupuna, Kuleana, Malama, Malama and, and Aloha, Aloha paired with today's modern technology and knowledge has the potential to create a sustainable future for Island Earth. As Hawaiians, this is our mission and our vision. We believe that if we take care of the Earth, it, it will take, take care of us. And if we take care of each other, the, the world, world will be a richer and fairer place, place for everyone. everyone. We, the youth of Hawaii, plead with you to act now. Let us look to the past for wisdom and, and to, to the, the future for survival. We only have one island earth. Let us do our best to take care of it and each other. We, we are, are one, one species, species with one planet, one chance. Heli i ka aina, he kaua ke kanaka. Through visionary leadership, Hawaii is rewriting the story of our planet's future. We strive to inspire a global movement we invite Island Earth to join us. Together, we can create a world where nature thrives, where clean energy powers our lives, and where all communities can flourish. Let Hawaii's voluntary local review be a call to action to demand change and to ensure a better world for future generations. Join us on this extraordinary journey. Mahalo and Aloha. I'd like to thank the Hawaii Green Growth team for such an inspiring video. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, Celeste, we can't wait to hear more from you. So the mic is yours. I think I'm, yep, thank you so much. Um, and aloha, everybody. And so lovely to hear the greetings from all over the world. I'm so delighted to be here with you also um, as a member of the Leadership Council of SDSN and longtime partner of Esri. We're just so excited to be able to talk about the technology, the action, the implementation, the partnerships inspired by our colleagues from UAE and also Jeff Sachs. And this is the first time we've, you're all the first audience to the video that we produced um, actually rolling out um, Hawaii's 2023 Voluntary Local Review. It is our second Voluntary Local Review, and it is the first statewide Voluntary Local Review in the United States. We're certainly inspired by other colleagues um, across 
the world, both with the VNRs and the VLRs, including in the United States, in New York, in LA, and perhaps given our size in Hawaii, you saw that it, this voluntary local review for Hawaii features all of our local leaders, our mayors, our four mayors, our governor. And as we say in Hawaii, our effort was truly kako, it's collective action. Um, you heard about the Aloha Plus Challenge. It's our statewide sustainability commitment that actually predates the SDGs. And it is derived and based on indigenous knowledge and wisdom over a thousand years of systems thinking and holistic ways of looking at sustainability. And so you could see that communicated through our youth, our keiki, it's Hawaii's values, it's island values, and it's the concept of island earth, uh, the recognition of the finite resources that we have. And so with our story map today, we're delighted to share that my colleague, Jill, um, who's part of our data and innovation team is going to scroll you through this as I talk through it. But here's the opening statement from our youth, our keiki, the future we want for Hawaii and island earth, looking at those values. The thing about the story map and in Hawaii in particular is we're really focused on storytelling. And this technology allows for a much more interactive way of both looking at data for data-driven decision-making that our leaders can look at, as well as our private sector partners, I'll get to that. So as Jill scrolls through this, you'll see um, that in Hawaii, we are tracking our six statewide goals, but they intersect to all of the SDGs. We have 37 targets and over 280 indicators that are currently being tracked. Uh, Story map actually looks at um, not just the youth statement, but also county spotlights, because it's really important that as we look at progress that we need to make in order to close the gap by 2030, that we celebrate our successes. And this is what we call our bright spots. So across the uh, story map, which you'll be able to see is the bright spots of implementation um, and interactive maps. Um, we have, you heard from our, our different mayors, you can look at Maui, you can explore Maui or Kauai or Hawaii Island. We also um, are engaging our private sector partners because again, this is really a Kako effort in Hawaii. It's our government, our local government, our statewide government. You heard from Governor Josh Green, who's actually here with us in New York for the high level political forum. And I should note that actually Hawaii is delighted to be a officially recognized SDG hub, a local 2030 hub with other colleagues and hubs. And so the governor will be formally rolling out the voluntary local review this week in New York and highlighting these different actions. Again, um, our private sector partners are critical partners in this. They've actually committed to tracking progress, not only on their ESG metrics and indicators and environment social governance, but also their progress on the SDGs. And they're doing things like actually disclosing voluntarily their energy efficiency data, um, and also ways that they're looking to increase um, food production or purchasing and procuring local food and contributing in their own way to that. Um, different things that you'll see in the spotlight as you go through this um, is the continuous accountability and measuring. So for us in Hawaii, we have actually pulled directly from the dashboard and the data that we have there to support our voluntary local review and our reporting. Our team has developed various APIs that we can pull that data seamlessly. And so what we have is sort of a daily VLR, continuous measuring and tracking through our dashboard, which is actually reflected in, in the story map. So you can look at our natural resource management and acres of watershed protected, um, solid waste and different events that are happening to uh, support that. And also looking at green workforce and education. A lot of what we're working on in partnership with Esri is training our next generation of leaders to be the ones that are managing this, to be familiar with ArcGIS and geospatial mapping. It's a very exciting thing that youth in Hawaii can actually do um, from a workforce and development perspective. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit conscious of time. I'm going to actually encourage everybody to scroll through our dashboard um, and look at it and interact with it. You know, it's um, we heard inspiring stories from Hawaii. Certainly in the island context, we are experiencing the impacts of climate change already. Given our limited land and our ambitious goals, we are actually forced to innovate. And what we see is the um, innovation and the intersection will happen at the nexus of the various SDGs of the various Aloha Plus challenge goals. We're going to need to figure out how to reach our 70% decarbonization strategy while also looking at doubling our local food production. Um, we're experiencing a housing crisis, which is not dissimilar to other places around the world. And so where we put our infrastructure matters, where we have those discussions matter, where we have innovative policy and legislation matters, 
and actually seeing the collaboration that needs to take place across all of these various sectors. So we encourage you to explore our story map. Again, we're so grateful to SDSN and ESRI for the partnership um, and look forward to the high-level political forum activities in the week ahead. Mahalo. Uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing that very interactive uh, story map. Um, and again, the in very inspiring video. Uh, we look forward to sharing all of the links to the story map so that our audiences and those who couldn't join us today can also learn from and interact with the stories uh, that you share through your story map. So thank you again to you and your wonderful team uh, for the presentation today. Uh, so, uh, uh, speaking of voluntary local reviews um, and the importance of localizing the SDGs, uh, we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Robert Nugua next. Uh, he is the head of the data and analytics analytics section at UN Habitat um, and is working across uh, various uh, global uh, agendas, not only the SDGs, but the global urban monitoring framework. And um, uh, I know personally that um, uh, GIS tools and technologies are at the core of the work that they do uh, and, and the great role that they also play in the EO for SDGs, um, uh, SDG 11 toolkit is also uh, notable. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'd like to to invite uh, Dr. Robert to present um, a uh, story map on the case of Mombasa, Kenya. Thanks a lot, uh, Mariam, and uh, a good morning, good evening to you all. I'll just uh, shortly share my screen. Mariam, let me know if you can see my screen or not. Uh, I can't. I don't know if other colleagues can, but I can't see your screen yet. Just a minute. I'll try it one more time. Let me know if you can see it now. Yes, I can see okay. it now. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I think thanks once again to STSN and uh, obviously also Esri and the entire uh, network of partners connecting on for this uh, session today. Um, as noted, I'm Robert, uh, Head of Data and Analytics at UN Habitat. And for our role, particularly in the enhancing the reporting uh, on, on the SDGs has been through quite a number of entry points. One, we are a strong believer in voluntary national reviews, but we are also a very strong believer in the voluntary local reviews, particularly here noting that UN Habitat uh, fronts and promotes a lot of work in cities, and local governments. And we do believe strongly that having that seat of uh, local government opportunities to report is uh, very, very important. So of course, in the last um, seven years, we've seen a very huge jump in terms of uh, local governments and local authorities that are ready and willing to put you know, themselves right at the front to be examined in terms of what they are doing uh, when it comes to achieving the SDGs. And so it's quite a phenomenal journey that perhaps five years ago, we had just a handful of uh, voluntary local reviews. And today, as Celeste noted, for example, from Hawaii, that case in joining New York at that time, is, is quite a big journey and a big jump uh, that we need to celebrate uh, quite wonderfully. And so what we see today, of course, is that all these um, big numbers of voluntary local reviews sort of also needed a systematic way of reporting, noting here that also important to have um, a way of comparing like for like, basically being able to compare the achievements of one city or local government with another city. So UN Habitat, working together with many partners, what we've done is to produce um, what we call a global urban monitoring framework. And this framework consists, consists of 77 indicators, largely drawn from the SDG family of indicators but also extending that to the new urban agenda, which is a complementary global agenda to the 2030 agenda. And from those 77 indicators, we've been um, disseminating largely the global urban monitoring framework, trying to showcase 
you know, the various sets of indicators involved, but also the classification of all that. So for the case study perhaps to share today, it's important to know that we've tried as much as possible to contextualize our local uh, government reporting processes through the structure of localizing the SDGs, but we do this through three uh, pillars. So we have uh, the inner pillar where we organize that local governments need to pick up the methodologies, they need to pick up their approaches, but also they need to be guided. And that, that guidance, of course, should be contextualized very much into global processes. So for that, we do provide technical cooperation support, uh, knowledge development, but also advocacy and capacity development. In the middle sector, you will notice that we promote very much the work on pushing more voluntary local reviews, more national reviews, but at the same time also making sure that we have a system and a standard of how that can be reported on for comparability purposes. And of course, at the larger cycle, we really anchor our supporting principles, particularly here noting that leaving no one behind, which local governments are really at, right at the forefront, but also noticing that for all this, we need to make sure we have multi-stakeholder partnerships and obviously multi-level governance, connecting the national uh, uh, as well as subnational for reporting purposes. So for the case shared today, this is uh, the application of the urban monitoring framework in Mombasa County, which is uh, one of the counties in, uh, in Nairobi. And uh, for that case, we've been able to apply the entire framework of the global urban monitoring framework, which is structured around uh, four city objectives and five domains that cover society, economy, environment, culture, governance, and implementation. And um, for Mombasa, they've been able to apply this amongst almost another 30 um, local governments as well. So I just picked out this case study for Mombasa for a few reasons, which I'll also share at the very end. But in terms of applying the tool, they've been able, for example, to set their baseline uh, using the 77 indicators, identified some gaps, but out of that process also, they've been able to identify uh, some action points or action areas where implementation can happen. Here is just a quick flag of um, how the implementation phase was carried out for Mombasa. So it's basically introducing the tool, working very closely with departmental heads, each one identifying their thematic contribution, then going out to collect the data. We do joint interpretation of the data and the finding and then articulate what each of those uh, elements mean in terms of actions. And through that stakeholder involvement uh, process, we've been able to score a few big wins. I think one being, for example, uh, the county has now identified their key priorities, which then directly informs the strategies uh, for the next financial uh, plan and uh, budgeting process, including, for example, uh, working on security, improving uh, walkways for pedestrians, but at the same time also addressing urgently uh, one of the concerns they identified around the provision of water. And I think earlier we noted very much that increasingly we need to make sure that we produce these sort of evidence, make sure that it informs our policy and decision making. So the case of Mombasa, of course, connects very much directly to that angle. And here you're able to see, for example, how data has been interpreted and integrated into just not only the planning processes, but also the budgeting processes. One highlight, of course, is also to note that in the process of collecting the data itself, we've involved a lot of communities, particularly young people, to map for us uh, a lot of uh, service points, but at the same time also helping us to validate uh, a lot of the satellite imagery and what we were picking up. For example, access to open public spaces, a lot of validation happened through young people collecting that information on the ground on each of those uh, spaces that were able to identify. So the, in a nutshell, I think as I wrap up is just to note that for this case study, uh, we've worked very closely with a, a, a local government that upfront was willing to be examined and upfront they opened up you know, their doors to say, come use the data, tell us exactly what our challenges and problems are and through that process, we accept to identify those priorities and we are willing also to implement some of the key findings that can then inform um, our own strategies. So from this process, we've been able also to connect them with uh, a quite a number of uh, bankable projects. For example, teams that are willing to invest in water and sanitation, 
are now willing to come up and see what the challenge is and what the business opportunities might be in that uh, specific process. There are also few elements, for example, around governance that requires a bit of changing systems, enhancing systems using technology, for example, revenue collection uh, systems, which are the county government of Mombasa is now willing to look into because they noted that there's an opportunity that they could almost double their local revenue collections by changing a few things. So I think speaking of uh, data-driven uh, voluntary local reviews, the case of Mombasa is a classical one, which of course we recommend that um, uh, the team here can take a look at uh, all this evidence is now available. And I think for today, the value add really is taking this sort of evidence and information away from the routine PDF documents to something more systematic as a digital story map, which in a very simple way visually can be shared and uh, can be easily understood, unlike perhaps the very, very deep reports that have been produced in traditional. So thanks again very much to the SDSN team and ESRI, of course, our long-term partners for providing these sort of tools and opportunities for local government to showcase their evidence in different ways, but more so more impactful ways. Thanks a lot, Mariam, and I hand back the floor to you. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Robert, for uh, that presentation. Um, and I know there's a lot of uh, great data and important information in the story map. So we look forward to sharing that uh, with our audience um, as well. Uh, and uh, thank you for also highlighting the role of youth um, in uh, the data collection process as well. Uh, so uh, I, I'd like to transition over to um, uh, remarks uh, from uh, Ms. Uh, Prim uh, Raja Surang. Uh, who is a youth advocate who will uh, talk a little bit about the role of youth um, in uh, in the SDGs. So uh, Prem, over to you. Sure, thank you very much. And distinguished delegates, speakers, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the SDG today and Sustainable Development Solution Network for organizing this timely event on data-driven voluntary national and local reviews for SDG and inviting youth to speak. It was a great initiative to hear from Kauai and to hear from both in Kenya and many countries you in UAE in geospatial special platform with countries implementing local solutions for the SDG. So my name is Prem Rajasurang Wokosamukun. I'm the APFSD Youth Representative, the Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development 2023, representing APFSD Youth Forum and our call for action. It is an Asia Pacific Regional Preparatory Meeting to the High Level Political Forum, HLPF, and I'm the Youth Representative to the UN World Data Forum. So these implementation on these websites will make data more accessible to everyone, especially for young people to learn about our country's BNR and ability of resources to bring more actors. Data and innovation information have been the key to rising awareness about SDG and these open data open source information will accelerate the implementation of SDG at all levels. So meaningful and inclusive youth engagement in producing and using data through innovative means for implementation of the SDG. We collect data and research and connecting with local community, with marginalized group, with in, and we need an inclusive data, disaggregated data that embraces diversity with people at the center, with women, youth, marginalized community, people with disability, LGBTQI+, and elderly. So implementation of these transformative policy that leave no one behind. Young people are the digital natives. We were born with digital technology, data, and innovation. We are both creating and using these data in our daily life, creating solutions, innovations to solve global problems like the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change. So leveraging these technologies, facilitating data collection, analysis, and dissemination in a manner that resonates with youth. With technology and social media, we join force together and collaborate and build a strong network to create actions everywhere in the world. Youth are working on transforming education, enabling health care services, equity, and taking climate action, and financing for data, and financing for meaningful and inclusive participation of everyone, every stakeholder, everywhere, to ensure a partnership at all levels. 
at this production of big data of contributing in social media creating actions youth have to we have telling stories from the data bridging gaps and bringing equality so we are at the forefront of innovative technologies process this unique opportunity on issues that affect our community and with youth in data generation, we can tap into our creativity with fresh ideas and leading more accurate and re relevant information. So strongly a partnership between government, NGO, civil society, academia, and private sectors can provide young people with resources, with platforms, with enabling environment that contribute effectively to data protection and utilization resources and people-centered design that influence development. So a co-creation, a designing of all platforms that ensure that youth voices are heard at all levels and perspective and to be incorporated with decision making process. So in the voluntary national review, we have a, we need to have an inclusion with the consultations, with taking action along line with youth, providing these spaces and platform for youth to grow and establish strengthening youth network businesses and startup for everyone this only 12 percent of the targets are on track in our recent report and young people need to actively participate in data collection in analysis and decision making that process and we can become the real agent of change we the young people are using the data are creating data youth are the agent of change Youth in decision making and ensuring the participation in local, national, and regional and global systems is a creation from execution to everywhere. We are including more people. We have artificial intelligence that can make us work faster, more efficient, that data that can save lives and to accelerate COVID-19 recovery. We worked out long online on a project of AI mass to help the community. We can have a project of using artificial intelligence, using technology to include but this people with disability we can create education for all lifelong learning and we take climate action everywhere moreover than that we have an establishment of a strong youth network with youth empower youth in data science in establishment and young people everywhere in the world even in asia and the pacific we are taking actions taking action with in a smarter way in a more better way efficient way that requires resources and more accessible to more people so it was a great time this world is our home we live together they have to live together safely and soundly there are precedented challenge and we have to rest on with timely equity resilient and sustainable future so together we will use a data driven the technology and artificial intelligence to accelerate implementation to make more accessible to everyone to reduce these courses and create increased productivity there's no one site fit all solution and there's not only one solution to one problem we need a special a specific and a unique way to solve problem every one of us is special and you are unique so you can decide your own destiny, your life, and decide your education for your future. We need better data to analyze, to predict, and to mitigate negative effects. Data is the representation every, of everyone, and we want to hear from you all. So please to invest in more data, to share more and gain more, sharing your investment to make it more efficient, more profitable. And let's work together with youth and share innovation, and we will accelerate COVID-19 recovery and full implementation of SDG at all levels. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prim, for that call to action. Uh, and I hope that you and other youth representatives continue to hold us accountable uh, so that we do more uh, and also create more opportunities and spaces uh, to engage and collaborate uh, with, uh, with the youth. So thank you. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining us uh, today. Um, next, uh, we have uh, Dr. Carmel Turborg, uh, Lead Accountant Manager at Esri Nonprofit. Um, Carmel, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, you are the leaders in this domain, so I will just hand the mic over to you uh, for your remarks. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to uh, share uh, a screen um, and see if I can 
share just one slide. I feel honestly that after Prim's comments, I have very little else to say because I'm so, uh, you know, the comments that I prepared and the remarks um, like are so in alignment with what she has put together um, already for you all. But hopefully I'll have a few graphics to help and further inspire you. Uh, thank you, Prim, for your leadership in this area and really excited to continue to look, at, look forward to many years ahead of following your, your work. So thank you very much to SDSN and the distinguished presenters here today. It was wonderful to work with our partners on putting this together. And I really firmly believe that to have a more sustainable planet, um, it'll only occur if we have two things, and these were mentioned by Prim, information and inclusion. And with increased uh, information and inclusion, we can understand more about the needs and behaviors of our society, uh, including all geographies, socioeconomic situations and environments. And sustainability will not incur until we affect behavior and take care of the critical needs of those who have been left behind in previous years. Geospatial technology, such as GIS, uh, Geographic Information Systems, for those who are not familiar with it yet, GIS um, help enable information integration and gap analysis. And I think those are two really important capabilities of a GIS. It allows you to ask things like, you can intentionally aim to find out things such as who is not counted in a census? Who is not a beneficiary? Where are the resources most needed? You can really start at answering the questions that we all need um, answers to in order to create a more sustainable planet. And GIS um, can help you model scenarios as well. Decision makers can use geospatial technology to ask questions such as, how will climate impact these specific communities? I'm sitting in Vermont today in a state of emergency due to intense flooding. And even in places that you think have all the resources and capabilities in the world, people have been caught off guard and we're facing a huge challenge as our own capital is underwater. How will a new health clinic, for instance, change access to healthcare and change the dial on SDG3? Um, how will help this help a specific vulnerable population so that perhaps the healthcare uh, location needs to be more geographically targeted to help those people who are most in need of uh, access to healthcare. So you see that geospatial information is needed to derive about 60% of the SDG data indicators. And therefore we really need to work with geospatial technologies and empower low and middle income countries to use these tools. And we've been working on that with these partners here. Um, presenting today. Um, I've been in the geospatial field for more than 30 years, and I never cease to be amazed at how we can use GIS to really create the world that we want to see. And that is um, the uh, um, theme, if you will, of our annual meeting that is happening this week. Um, this annual event has tens of thousands of people who care about our world and um, are really helping manage it. Um, they're learning about new advancements like tools such as you've seen today, the ArcGIS Story Maps template developed with SDSN uh, for reporting and storytelling and other new technologies that hold a lot of promise for us like ArcGIS Knowledge. ArcGIS Knowledge um, uh, which uses graph and spatial analytics to support data discovery, collaborative investigations, link analysis, and information sharing across organizations are examples. There's many others here on the slide that you can take a look at. These are all different types of technologies that are being integrated with geospatial uh, analytics and uh, reporting and so forth, and you're able to really do so much more these days than we could in years past. It is so much easier. Um, as we've seen, uh, the use of story maps to create powerful communications about the VNRs and VLRs, as presented by my distinguished colleagues from UAE, Hawaii, and UN Habitat's work with Mombasa, are really wonderful examples of this. These information products are so important to help citizens understand where progress has been made and where they are lagging behind with specific goals. And each community needs to consider their own priorities for the SDGs in the context of their environment and their culture. With geospatial technology, the integration analysis and reporting of this information enables us to be more inclusive in our development interventions as well. Since the UNGA meeting in September of last year, ESRI also launched the ArcGIS solution for SDGs, which can be used to create SDG data hubs. This is a contribution from ESRI to provide a simple solution for national as well as subnational local governments, academia, and others to present the status of their progress on the SDGs while enabling member states to report their SDG data indicators to the United Nations. 
Um, our next presenter, uh, Ines Mato of the Public Foundation, will share the work of the SDG Data Alliance with UN member states to create these SDG data hubs. And I want to note that these tools are all interoperable. So the VNRs and VLR story maps can be driven from data provided through an SDG data hub once those are established. And we look forward to seeing more of the SDG data hubs and VNR and VLR story maps in 2024 for sure. So I thank you for your time and attention, and let's continue to work together with a lens on inclusion and geospatial information access as we work on creating the world that we want to see. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Carmel, um, for uh, that wonderful presentation. And um, I do realize that you're you're juggling both HLPF and the UC. So thank you for taking the time to join us and um, uh, happy to share uh, updates from the UC as well on all the great developments and, and updates shared by uh, the geospatial community. Um, so last but not least, uh, we have uh, Ms. Inez Motto, uh, Data Project Manager at the Public Foundation. Um, as as uh, Dr. Carmel mentioned, uh, she'll be talking a little bit about how uh, some of the countries that are part of the um, SDG Data Alliance are using geospatial uh, technologies and platforms for their uh, SDG uh, reporting and, and monitoring. Um, Ms. Inez, over to you. Thank you, Miriam. Can everyone hear me? Okay, yes. excellent. Yes, uh, thanks everyone, Miriam and all the organizers of the event. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's also very exciting to see all the developments that many of you show as it relates to data and SDGs. So very, very exciting. Thanks everyone. Uh, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on what Carmel um, was talking about and really, really dive a little deeper into how uh, we are accelerating the achievement of the SDGs and, and also how we are really using GIS uh, for tracking and, and achievement of SDGs and how we work with developing countries. Um, first, just a quick intro. I'm a, I'm a project manager for a public foundation and really the data alliance and the data alliance is a partnership comprised of different partners from the private and public sector and we really work with developing countries to accelerate the development of SDGs so I act as a project manager and um, and really I wanted to talk a little bit more about the SDG template that Carmel was mentioning and explaining this um, was developed uh, a few months ago and it's been very useful for countries from the Data Alliance to start putting uh, their data hubs together. And by doing so, they are better able to track the SDGs and accelerate progress. So I know we have uh, Burkina Faso here in the call. Uh, we have, I saw Andre earlier, he's been working with the Data Alliance in implementing the SDG template, the SDG solution to, um, to create a data hub that will be tracking the, the SDG. So that's, that's an example right there. And the technology really makes it easier for countries to start focusing on what's important, that is the data tracking and how they're progressing towards those SDGs, rather than just being stuck in making the technology work. So that has been the really the benefit. And we're working with countries in Africa and South America also, and the Pacific, uh, to, to really uh, implement this technology and for the countries to, to advance the SDGs. Now, um, I also wanted to explain a little bit how, how and why these countries are using the SDG solution. So I, I already talked about the tracking of SDGs, but also um, countries can really align the SDGs to their priorities. So for example, if health is a priority for a country, they can definitely focus on that aspect and, and track that priority in the hub. And at the same time, they are aligning that to uh, SDGs. So that's, uh, that's something that we have seen and that countries really love. And um, another thing I wanted to mention is, of course, the decision-making aspect. Uh, the data hubs are really intended for countries 
to uh, be able to make decisions uh, by using the, the data. So that's an important aspect I wanted to mention, and we have already been seeing the impact uh, in countries and how they, they are uh, using the data for different purposes. Um, and lastly, also the data hubs can be uh, very useful for countries to request funding for different things because the data hubs can point gaps that countries have. So they can always use the data to um, push for funding for different areas that might be needed in their country. So that's a couple of uses and sort of the impact that we've been seeing with the use of data hubs and the SDG solution. So um, I know I have like one minute, but I wanted to show you really quick. Uh, let's see if we have time here. I wanted to show you really quick my screen to be able to show you a little bit sdg.org. Oh, sorry. Let me open it here. It's the screen closed, but can you see, can you see the website now, sdg.org? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I know we have like one minute left, but I wanted to invite you to check how sdg.org, this is the website where the Data Alliance posts content about anything that the Data Alliance is doing, but also how countries that we work with are progressing with their SDGs. So definitely I wanted to invite you to check it out, to click here on the data hubs and see um, the current hubs we have posted, how they're progressing with their SDGs. Uh, how they're using the SDG solution. Um, and really, uh, if you have feedback, we also have a place uh, down here at the bottom of the page where you can leave feedback and get involved with, with the initiatives. So with that, I'll leave you. Thank you so much, Miriam. And, uh, and it was great participating today. Thank you so much, Inez, uh, for uh, sharing the website and uh, the important work that you're doing with the SDG Data Alliance uh, countries. Uh, we are at time. Uh, so I just wanted to thank all of our participants and presenters. I also wanted to thank my amazing team who has been running the Zoom and engaging with uh, all the participants in the chat. So the thank you, Castelline, Anella, Tapiwa, uh, Charles, uh, Jill, Samantha, and everyone uh, who has been supporting on on the back end. Uh, and thank you to all the participants uh, for joining us um, for uh, this uh, very inspiring session. Uh, and we'll be in touch with all the various links and presentations and, and updates uh, from, from all the teams. Uh, and enjoy the rest of uh, HLPF. Um, thanks again. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.